As we reach the end of the year, it's good to take time to look back and appreciate the fact that, that we're still alive. As this year's news articles have been dominated by stories of gross incompetence, it might be tempting to think that the world is going backwards, but that's completely not true. There's actually been loads of advances in the world of science. A multitude of space missions, magic lenses, new life forms and 3D printed eyeballs. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so find a comfortable seat, grab yourself a bowl of champagne, and join me as we look at This Year in Science 2018. Humanity's inevitable slide into robot domination continued at a rampant pace this year. They beat us on reading tests, although admittedly some of us are better than others at that. They can now solve text-based capture tests in less than 0.05 seconds, meaning that we'll have to jump through even more hoops to prove that we're not robots online. Boston Dynamics continue to creep us out with their running and jumping robots. And robots can now cling to your soft toys to make them come alive, which isn't at all the beginning of a Stephen King novel. But on a more serious note, this year saw the first recorded fatality caused by a fully automated system, when an Uber self-driving car sadly hit and killed a woman in Arizona. If that wasn't sci-fi enough for you, let's go edit our DNA with everyone's favourite gene editing technique, CRISPR. CRISPR saw a lot of development this year, which was good, bad, and ugly. In good news, scientists at the Gladstone Institute discovered a method for turning skin cells into stem cells using CRISPR. The University of Pennsylvania announced the first clinical trials on humans involving the use of CRISPR to modify the T cells of patients to help them fight cancer more effectively. Researchers at the University of Edinburgh used CRISPR to edit the genome of pigs to make them resistant to the PRRS virus, which currently costs the pork industry $2.5 billion each year in just Europe and the US alone. In bad news, a report from Stanford University indicated that CRISPR gene edits in humans may trigger an immune response, which would severely limit what it could be used for in humans. And a study in Nature Biotechnology suggests that the edits that CRISPR makes to your DNA might not be as accurate as previously thought. It causes collateral damage, including unintentionally deleting huge chunks of DNA, or rearranging or mutating DNA sometimes far away from where it was intended. Because of this, they saw that 15% of the mouse and human cells they were studying stopped working. Clearly, there's still a lot we need to understand about this new technology, which brings us to the ugly news. In November, we got the news from China that the first humans to be genetically engineered using CRISPR were born. This is worrying on so many levels. Essentially, these poor children are being used as human experiments, and it goes against international consensus about using gene editing techniques on human embryos. I can't believe you've done this, was basically the reaction of the scientific community when they found out this news. And, I mean, my view of this is science is a tool and like any tool, it can be used for good and it can be used to cause harm. And like Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility. And this is definitely an example where it's being used incredibly irresponsibly. Well, that was that. Now let's have a look at this. I find it endlessly amazing that us humans can just dig some stuff out of the ground and then put that stuff together in the right way that it makes a thing that can launch itself into space and then go roam around on other planets or like fly around in space and take photos of galaxies on the other side of the universe. And this is stuff that came out of the ground. 2018 was a bumper year for lobbing things into space. NASA launched the transiting exoplanet survey satellite designed to spot planets around other stars. And it was perfect timing because the previous telescope that did this, the Kepler space probe, sadly died this year after an amazingly successful mission. Over the nine years that it was running, it discovered 2,600 planets orbiting distant stars and gave us the fact that about one in five stars in our galaxy have a planet in the habitable zone. This means that there might be 50 billion planets with liquid water on them that we could go and live on, maybe. This new satellite is exciting because it'll be able to see an area 400 times larger than Kepler. So NASA are gonna to make tons more discoveries. And rest in peace, Kepler, you did a great job. In other news, the Mars InSight spacecraft launched and successfully landed on Mars to dig down into the subsurface to see what's there. 
NASA approved the Mars Helicopter Scout, so there's going to be a helicopter on Mars in 2020. The spacecraft Dawn went silent after studying the two largest objects in the asteroid belt, Vesta and the dwarf planet Ceres. The Parker Solar Probe was launched to study the Sun and solar wind. The Bepi Colombo Probe was launched and will arrive at the planet Mercury in 2025. OSIRIS-REx arrived at the asteroid Bennu, it discovered water, and it's going to bring back some asteroid material back to Earth. China's Chang'e 4 mission launched to land a robotic craft on the far side of the moon. And the SpaceX Falcon Heavy successfully launched a Tesla car into space, despite the fact that there aren't any roads. We didn't just send things into space, we also discovered a load of stuff in space. Things like this. New analysis of data from Jupiter's moon Europa showed evidence of water plumes. This is exciting because if they're jetting water from underneath the surface into space, we could potentially send a spacecraft there to look for signs of life. We also saw organic molecules on Saturn's moon Enceladus. We saw an insanely bright explosion, 10 to 100 times more powerful than a normal supernova. And we called this 80-2018 COW and scientists basically don't really know what caused it. We also don't know what's causing the repeating fast radio bursts from an object we've called FRB 121102. There have been 300 of these bursts so far from this small galaxy 3 billion light years away, and they're so energetic that it's estimated that in the time of an eye blink, the object releases more energy than the sun releases in an entire year. Astronomers reported the first detection of matter falling into a black hole using ESA's XMM Newton Observatory. Data from the Gaia mission captured rogue high-velocity stars hurtling towards our galaxy, possibly from another galaxy. We saw a super-Earth orbiting near the snow line of Bernard's star just six light years away from Earth, which might be a good place to go live in a few billion years. And some people said that we were visited by an alien spacecraft called Oumuamu... Oo. Mau Mau. Mua Mua? Um, mua Mua. <laughs> I don't know. Although it was interesting because it didn't look like a comet or an asteroid, so may have come from outside our solar system. I'm going to interrupt this program for a quick ad break for my own things. I'm selling some stuff, some posters, some pins and a mug. Uh, if that sounds interesting, it helps me support my channel and and make more videos like this. Check it out on DFTBA, Domain of Science. And if you're enjoying this video, consider subscribing. Right, on to my favourite subject of them all, physics. In the world of physics, researchers at Harvard reported the first single lens that can focus all of the colours at the same time. They made a metamaterial consisting of arrays of nanostructures to do this. This is potentially a huge deal because it takes what's normally a stack of lenses and turns it into a single, flat, easily made surface. And so it'll be good for miniaturizing lenses and also potentially revolutionize things like VR and AR technology. Researchers found perhaps the highest temperature superconductor to date that superconducts at only minus 13 degrees Celsius or 8 degrees Fahrenheit, but only if compressed between two diamonds to 2 million times atmospheric pressure. Also, graphene was observed to superconduct if two layers are slightly offset from each other. Both results are fascinating and might give us more insight into how to make other superconducting materials. There was a new record for efficiency for organic photovoltaic cells, bringing the maximum efficiency up from 15% to 17.3%, which is quite a big jump. The most wear-resistant metal so far was created, a platinum gold alloy, a hundred times more durable than high-strength steel. The Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory announced its first detection of an object in space, tracing back a neutrino to a blazar, a very active centre of a distant galaxy 3.7 billion light-years away. And LIGO has made 11 gravitational wave detections to date. Google unveiled its 72-qubit quantum computer, Physicists produced a quantum entanglement between living bacteria and light. We found that the geomagnetic north and south poles of the Earth can flip very fast within 200 years, and the standard kilogram was redefined in terms of Planck's constant. Whew, blimey, that was quite the barrage. Right, on to the world of biology. Scientists mapped a complete fruit fly connectome at nanoscale resolution from 21 million images showing how all 135,000 neurons in its brain are connected. 
The wheat genome was fully sequenced after 13 years of work which will help develop strains of wheat that are resilient to climate change. We found that naked mole rats don't die of ageing so we can add them to the list of animals that can't be bothered to die which includes flatworms and the immortal jellyfish. We found the largest bird to ever have existed, an extinct elephant bird from Madagascar which was 3 metres tall. The oldest tools outside of Africa were found in China and dated to 2.12 million years ago. And an entirely new form of life was found in a tiny sample of soil from Nova Scotia called a hemimastigote, which is not an animal, plant, fungus or anything else. It's just its own thing, which is an incredible discovery. The Earth Biogenome Project was launched which aims to sequence the genomes of all 1.5 million animal, plant, protozoan and fungal species on Earth over a 10 year period. And scientists in the UK completed the 100,000 Genomes Project which will help tailoring treatments to specific patients' genetics and brings us to this year in medicine. There are a lot of advances in the world of medicine this year and here are some of my top stories. A blood test that can detect 8 common cancer tumours early was developed and reported 70% positive results. Advances were made in Alzheimer's research where scientists found that blocking the enzyme beta secretase in mice can substantially reduce the formation of plaques thought to be responsible for the debilitating disease. And 3D printed corneas were created, the FDA approves the first artificial iris and the first lab grown lungs were successfully transplanted into pigs. There was a massive study on the effect of low dose aspirin on older healthy people, previously thought to be beneficial but was shown to actually not be beneficial and perhaps harmful, which is a good thing to know. A new polio vaccine that doesn't require refrigeration was developed, it can just be freeze dried, which is an amazing development for transportation to remote areas and for areas that don't have refrigeration infrastructure. And finally, research was done into the effects of vaping, which is hot amongst teens, with one in five high schoolers doing it, and the results were not good at all. Medical researchers found that e-cigarettes contained chemicals known to cause cancer and brain damage, as well as potentially toxic levels of metals including arsenic, chromium, lead, manganese and nickel. So yeah, smoking got rebranded, we've got a whole new generation of nicotine addicts, and we can look forward to a whole load of lawsuits happening in about 20 years. Well, on a lighter note, let's look at this year in climate change. Okay guys, there's some good news and some bad news. I'll start with the good news. The hole in the ozone layer is recovering much faster than previously thought and is now projected to totally close by the 2030s in the Northern Hemisphere and the 2050s in the Southern Hemisphere. This is a fantastic example of how humanity can all come together, organise and change their behaviours to fight a giant existential threat. Admittedly, CFC emissions were easier to give up than carbon emissions, but this is still a great success story that we can use to show that it's possible for us to enact large-scale global change. Which brings us to the bad news. The World Meteorological Organization published its latest report showing that CO2 levels in the atmosphere reached 405.5 parts per million in 2017. This is up from 403.3 in 2016 and 401 parts per million in 2015. There were record high carbon emissions in 2018, 37.1 billion metric tonnes, and the quality of future data will be negatively affected by the Trump administration cancelling NASA's carbon monitoring system. Because if you can't see it, it doesn't exist. The effects of all of this carbon has been clear. The hottest years on record have been the last four years. West Greenland's ice sheet is melting at its fastest rate in centuries, which will make sea levels rise. Insect populations have crashed, meaning that we're now having to employ humans to pollinate crops. And the IPCC said things like rapid far-reaching and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society are needed to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees. It's hard for me to work out what to say that hasn't been said a billion times before. We all know this stuff and it's a total bummer. I don't know about you but these stories tend to leave me feeling kind of guilty and helpless. And feeling guilty and helpless isn't a good place to start enacting change. So I'm starting a new rule. Every single climate change story that talks about how negative everything is needs to end on one actionable step that you can take this week to actually start making progress to fight this stuff. 
So this is my plan. If you think about it, every single step of progress is going to be made by an individual making a decision. And so the trick is to work out how you as an individual can have the biggest impact, how you can leverage your position to make the biggest change. And I think one way of doing this is through our workplaces. So if you are a junior employee, you can start a green team. If you're on the management positions, you can help the green team or encourage people to turn off the lights or computers when they leave work. And if you're a CEO of a company, you can really think about how your company can reduce its carbon footprint, what things it can do. And I know you've got all of those shareholders banging on about you about endless profits, but what's the point of endless profits if we're all dead? So let's make the downtown dark. Whoa, well, that just about wraps things up. Thanks for coming along on this journey with me through the science of 2018, and I'm looking forward to seeing where we go in 2019. So, wishing you all a very happy new year. And if in the new year you're looking to up your science game, I'd recommend checking out the sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. It's a website where you learn different subjects like physics, mathematics, computer science, a whole bunch more, and you learn by actively solving problems, which is the best, if not the only way to properly learn a subject. The questions are built around problems that you have to solve. I really enjoy solving them myself, especially the weekly problems. It keeps my m mind fresh. And also they're proper mathematics or science questions that you're solving, so you're actually learning some real valuable information. So if that sounds of interest, check out brilliant.org slash DOS. There's also a link in the description below. And for the first 200 people who subscribe, they're giving away a 20% discount for their annual membership, which unlocks all of their premium content. They've got a lot of stuff on there also for free. So check that out. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the new year.